So here we're on the last part and we're looking at private loans. So the private loans here will compound, which means the interest gets added to the principal every single day, and that's different. So first of all, make sure you have these numbers before we really get started. Uh, you might copy the spreadsheet from me. Some of these things will be missing. You're just going to click the arrow, go to copy to, and, and put it into your existing spreadsheet. If these numbers don't line up per perfectly, just change the cells that it's referring to because you want to make sure you're calling on your private loans for senior, junior, sophomore, and freshman year, and also looking at the total private loans. So that might be in a different location. For me, that's all in sheet one. And it's in 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. It might be elsewhere for you. But these are the numbers you should get. Um, we're going to assume a 6% rate. We're going to assume that you're making a $400 monthly payment. And here, we're going to assume that these, you might get some weird numbers here. We're going to assume that there's no deferment period that you're paying right after school. So that's what all this is about. So let's get started. Here in freshman year, I've started it for you. And so what you can do for freshman year is just click here and drag it down to 12. One more. Okay. So you can see that at the end of freshman year with compound interest, it builds up much faster. We go from 18400 to 19600 That's a $1,200, um, over almost $1,200 in interest. And what's happening in each case is that even though the daily percent is so small, it's the interest rate 6% divided by 365. That little amount is added right back onto your starting balance each and every day for 30 days for, for a billing cycle. So that this formula makes sense where it says, all right, what is the ending balance at the end of a period? Well, um, here I guess I put month. This should be... It's not inaccurate to say, but more more accurate to say billing periods because every 30 days is not always line up with a month. But all right, so here we do um, F2, which is the starting balance. Here's F2 times one plus B6, the interest rate divided by 365, and not multiplied by 30, but raised to the power of 30 because with each and every day, that little bit of extra daily interest is compounded or add it back on. So this is the compounding part. We're using an exponent, not a multiplication. And that's why this is building so much faster. Now when you reach sophomore year, it's your 13th month, your balance starts off with where it was before, plus the loan you took out in sophomore year. In this case, it's right here, B3. All right, and then, so now, these values I'm gonna drag down. We're not paying anything off yet. In reality, it depends on the loan, but in most cases you can pay the loan off little by little while you're in school, and that will help. We'll explore that. Uh, but right here, I'm going to drag down sophomore, I'm going to type in 14. I'm going to be careful. This should not, I don't want to drag down the formula from right above, otherwise I would be re-adding in that sophomore loan. I want it to equal the ending balance of the past month. Okay. These three I can drag down, and then um, I want to be careful and do one more. So go like this, drag it, and then you can see the 14's there, so just type 15. Now once you have these two, and again, I'm not selecting the first cycle, the first billing cycle or month of my sophomore year, because that's including that extra loan. I don't want to drag that formula down, but I do want to take these two with me, because it ignores that additional loan, and there's my sophomore year. Now look at this. Even though the loan amount we took out in sophomore year was lower, you can see here that the loan amounts 18, 15, 11, 9 are going down. The interest, the rate at which the interest is growing is increasing. We started with 34, 7, and now we're at 36, 8. So it's over 2,000 now, right, in interest. So let's, let's see what happens here. We go to junior year. That's our 25th month. It's going to equal our previous balance plus the junior year loan, which is right here, 11749 And now I drag these down. And just to kind of be faster, I'll do it this way. And 26, 27. These two formulas need to be fixed. They refer to this. And then that. So now I've got junior year started in the same way. Select 
I basically set up the first three months like that manually and then take the last two and drag it. There's my junior year. And then senior year starts off from the 37th month. So it takes the previous balance and adds on this my little senior year loan, the smallest one in the group. And take these, drag it, and then just kind of repeat the process. Get those three months set up and then clean it up. This should say 38, 39. This should just be the previous balance, and previous balance, and now that looks good. And then I kind of select the last two months in that cycle. Not all three. If I select all three, don't mess up my formula there. And I go to 48. Okay. And then that's four years, 48. Then we go into repayment. We're not going to defer this. Some loans uh, allow you to have a deferment period where the interest keeps building up, but you don't have to pay anything. And um, But here we're going to assume you have to repay right away. And the repayment amount, don't enter the number, enter the cell. So it's going to be dollar sign and then B7. We're going to do a flat payment of 400. There it is. All right. Now this formula changes. We just want to subtract the payment. And I guess I could have applied that formula all along. Right? So I'll do, oops, that did not work at all. Okay, something's wrong. It's mad. Undo. So do minus H. And you know what? I'm going to drag that up because if you want to um, put in, it's not going to change anything right now because there's zeros in here. But the way the formula was set up, if I type a number into these spots, it wouldn't change things here. But now you can, right? You type in one number, it recalculates everything, right? Because it's true that you can do little early payments to really get this to go down. And we'll talk about that. Um, all right, so now we start for $400. Everything's looking good. I'm gonna just drag this down one. That should be a 50. And the question is, what's gonna happen here? Now you can see that with a $400 payment, it's starting to go down, but it's only going down by like $100 because of what we're really paying off here over and over again is the interest. So let's just drag it down and see what happens. And we're going down. Okay, we're getting there. It's a much bigger loan to pay off, and so even with a bigger payment, you can see that after 300 months, it's only down to 20,000. Right? 342. Okay, 400 months is too far. Good. Okay, so it should be, it looks like it's about 374. Okay. And what I did there is just look for the first negative balance. That's where you've paid too much. So the payment here should just equal essentially what you have here, right? The starting balance plus the interest, and then that that might and that amount exactly essentially. So this formula right here actually kind of does that. If we just take the first part of this formula here, copy that, and um, then paste it here. Right, that should do it. You can see it makes zero, right? So basically what that did was it took F375, our starting balance, and it took that daily interest compounded 30 days, and that it made it that the payment, essentially. And that's doing just a zero. Now 374 payments, quite a few, right? Let's see what that means here. All right. So that means it took 326 months to pay off the loan. I took off the 48 years there, and that means 27 years to pay off this loan. Now, these reference numbers, right, something's wrong here, right? Let's figure this out. Total paid, I have the sum in I, so that should be the sum of H and H. That's where my payments are. I'll fix that on your sheet. Boom. And here I should retype that. Now, look at this. This is amazing, really. You, <laughs> the, the interest is over the value of the loan, right, in this model right here. Now, this I've made up some of these numbers, but the average interest rate did not make up. How much you paid off, how much you're paying off, though, each month, um, that's kind of a high amount. And even with that high amount, um, you're still 
still paying $75,000 in loans in this scenario. So you're paying off more in interest than the loan was worth. So this, this alone will be $130,000 in, in loan amounts. And now that should kind of bring us back to sheet number one. And this should bring us to this here. And let's just see what's going on. Total cost of the four years of 130. Total loan amount 81. Total interest paid. Here we want to add off up all the interest cells on all of these tabs down here. So let's just do that real quick. Equals. Go to go here. Total interest plus. Just keep clicking down the tabs. Uh, total interest will be in B10 right here. Plus total interest here plus total interest here hit enter now you're not going to get this number we'll see what number you get on the actual sheet I'll have that ready for you and then I mean if you look at the cost here we're basically saying that if you take E24 that was the cost of the four years and then add in the 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 interest on your loans it comes to $211,000 for this four-year college model. It's kind, it's kind of amazing. That's a lot of money, and that's what we're talking about here. All right, I hope this helps.